very sad. Did you post for Jack Perry? I bought a 10, a ten pack. But I had a great time.
for the tardiness, but uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, informational meeting dated uh, Monday, April 8, 2024, and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to uh, skip special reports since we're late to get uh, to get to the students of the month, so we don't hold you guys up. So, uh, uh, executive I, session. Yeah, uh, talk really quick. We had the executive session that started at 5:30 today. We talked about personnel matters. Yes. Um, mainly, that was it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> personnel <laughs> matters, uh, and then I'll hand it to Dr. Harris for information. Oh, thank you, Mr. Stovar. Um, we're going to start with our students of the month, and this is actually every month I say it as our favorite part of what we do as a school board and as, as um, principals and uh, administration is recognizing our students for their different achievements. And I'm going to turn it over uh, to start with Dr. Coiner. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Uh, first, I'm going to give a couple elementary uh, school updates for the district. Um, Sunrise, in particular, had a pretty fun assembly this morning done by PT alum Lindsay Surmas. Um, who runs a circus and astronomy themed performance. Uh, we did that to gear up excitement for the solar eclipse. Uh, the teachers also shared information today about the solar eclipse and they showed the astronomy club video. So thank you to the high school for the astronomy club video. Um, we want to give a special thanks to our amazing community. Through Donors Choose, we were able to fund enough solar glasses for the entire building, including every student and staff member to use for today, which was awesome. Uh, another uh, update about Sunrise, organized by Mrs. Oliver and supported by Mr. Spoody. Sunrise has a new Kids of Steel running club that started this spring. We had 99 students oh involved. Um, they have the option to run the Pittsburgh Kids Marathon on May 1st. Kindergarten Kickoff, which is our big district-wide event to kick off excitement for the incoming kindergarten students, is this Wednesday, two days from now on the 10th. All schools run this event, and we are grateful for the community's support. We have a lot of local organizations that come in, such as the local libraries, the Level Green Women's Club, Westmoreland Community Action, People, and daycare providers. Uh, this week is also the CAP-sponsored Third Grade Buddy Day. Again, thank you, high school. Um, the third graders can't wait to meet their buddies that they've been writing letters to several times this year and spend some time with them. We are grateful for the CAP program continuing to run this opportunity for our kids. We do begin state testing in a few weeks. Uh, we want to thank all the families, staff, and students for their continued support and understanding during testing time. It's pretty stressful for everyone involved and we appreciate everyone's kindness. We will be celebrating the end of the year with lots of field trips, track and field day, and reward celebrations for the students over the next month. And that is the end of my updates. So the most important reason I am here is to honor Ms. Sophie Mergenovich. Come on up, Sophie. <laughs> Sophie is an 11-year-old fifth grade student at Sunrise Estates Elementary School. She is joined today by her father and mother, Matt and Katie Mergenovich, along with her sister, Lila, and her brother, Simon, and I believe both sets of grandparents and her great aunt. <laughs> Sophie is an amazing choice for our April Student of the Month. I'm awed by her kindness and selflessness every single day. She is the epitome of someone who is caring, polite, and empathetic. During our conversation together, we talked a little bit about school. Sophie told me that her favorite subject is math because she finds it very easy. She also told me that school is important and she likes to get good grades. I was very excited about that <laughs> comment. Um, this, Sophie spends most of her time playing basketball. She also plays lacrosse. She is on the basketball travel team and the AAU team called the Scoring Factory. She claims basketball to be her favorite and wants to keep playing long term. Sophie also loves to bake, especially cakes and pies. She has baked for her own birthday, cousins, and some friends. Her favorite is vanilla with strawberry filling. 
She also loves to play with her brother at home, which, in her words, may involve some friendly wrestling. <laughs> Sophie's future career goals are to open her own bakery, which focuses on sweets. She also mentioned she would love to work for her family at the car dealership. Sophie hopes to play basketball in college. She mentioned Pitt or Seton Hill. Some of Sophie's teachers shared some lovely thoughts with me. Mrs. Hawk, who is her homeroom teacher, shared, I am amazed at the kindness, selflessness, and inquisitive nature that Sophie exhibits on a daily basis. As a parent, you tell your child to look for those who need somebody, and Sophie does just that. On numerous occasions this year, she has made someone feel included. She is a helper, an includer, and a giver by nature. Not only does she do her part in helping others, but she pushes herself and gives 100% in her schoolwork and in her athletics. She asks meaningful and thought-provoking questions, and someday she will make a good lawyer, advocate, or judge. Mrs. Guerreri, who is here tonight, uh, another one of Sophie's fifth grade teachers, mentioned Sophie is such a sweet and great kid. She is sweet, helpful, thoughtful, kind, and so much more. She strives to do her best, and she won't settle for less. She is so inquisitive in science that she pushes herself, Mrs. Guerreri, to dig further into the material. She is a great role model for other kids. She goes out of her way to make sure all kids are included. Also, and the other fifth grade teacher, Ms. Pratt, also mentioned, Sophie is an outstanding student that always goes above and beyond in her work, even wanting to learn more about every subject. Her manners and respectful behavior shine through on a daily basis. She comes to school with a positive attitude and smiles every day. I want to thank um, also Mrs. Hartman, who is one of her fourth grade teachers is here, and Mr. Spoody, who is one of her third grade teachers is here. Sophie is well deserving of this award and embodies the traits we look for in a student when selecting our student of the month. We are honored to have Sophie represent Sunrise as the April Elementary Student of the Month. Next up, um, Mr. S we have a Trafford Middle School. It's going to be represented by um, Dr. Tapp tonight because Mr. Sullivan, he had surgery and he's been out for a couple weeks, so um, he's doing well and he will be back soon. So, another quick panic. <clears throat> so, I'd like to introduce Leanna Reback. Can you please come down? Leanna is accompanied by her parents and grandfather. She is a well-rounded eighth grade student at TMS. She enjoys playing softball, participates in Girl Scouts, and does voice lessons along with reading, swimming, playing the flute, and singing. Uh, the science department. Leanna is an extraordinary, mature young lady. She is a go-to student in science. She contr contributes daily in class. She is always prepared and will ask questions when clarification is needed. Her work is neat concise and high quality. Leanna interacts with other students and is always kind. She shows patience as needed. She will continue to do great things in her future. Leanna shows enthusiasm for reading, contributes sharp, insightful ideas to class discussions, excels at written analysis, and always aims to push herself to learn everything she can. A mature and friendly young lady, Leanna is kind and respectful to both her teachers and her peers. Leanna is consistently hardworking and responsible student who contributes meaningfully to conversations and group work. She is not afraid to speak up respectfully if she has a question or concern, which not only shows her maturity, but reveals her desire for learning and ability for leadership. In art, Leanna possesses all the qualities of an outstanding student and human. She is kind, thoughtful, conscientious, personable, and works extremely hard and perseveres throughout problem solving until she gets it right. She isn't afraid to make mistakes or take risks. Even if she fails, then she will fix it next time. The world would be a better place if we had more students of this caliber. In Spanish, Leanna stands out for outstanding effort, work strong ethic, positive attitude, and kind of personality. She consistently displays leadership qualities and serves as a positive role model to other students. She is also part of the drama club. She has participated in the drama club and all the shows during her time at TMS. Starring as Crush in Finding Nemo in March, 
She has shown by example how to work positive, positively in a group and has taken on more responsibility with each passing year. And finally, she's a part of student council. She has participated in student council for all three years at TMS and is currently the class president. She leads with grace and honor. She listens to students' ideas and guides her peers in fair decision making. Her kindness and how she carries herself is always respectful towards her classmates and they listen to her ideas during meetings. She sets the standard for how leaders should act. Congratulations, Leanna Revac, for being TMS Student of the Month. And when you hear everything that the principals read about the Students of the Month, you have to remember we have 3,800, 3,850 students, and every year we only choose perhaps 21. So when you do the math, it is very hard to achieve that honor. So I just want to put that in perspective too, because I know um, I didn't say that up front, but this is such a great um, recognition of your talent. And remember, they do all these things when you're not there. I always say that's the best proven, if you know your kid's doing great, is when you go and get this reward and you're doing the right thing and no one else is around to notice that. Mom and dad and all the family that supports you, you know where to be seen, but they still do the right thing. And that's what always what makes this so important. Just, just a few things, Dr. Harris, what's going on at Trafford Middle, sure. Mr. Uh, Solomon gave me a few things. Finding Nemo Jun Jr. was a great hit. Uh, the students did a fantastic job and a big thanks to Mrs. Ruoff and her team. And with the fourth quarter starting, we are in the middle of final preparations for PSSAs and Keystones. Students are looking forward to um, the 5K, Gettysburg, the Spring Fling, which is their dance, receiving yearbooks, music concerts, and the eighth grade farewell. A lot of fun stuff the last seven weeks, yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, I saw Finding Nemo and loved it. The costumes and everything was great. And a big shout out, I also want to let Renee Rummel, because there was a lot of kids in that cast who could sing. I mean, that was impressive. The boys, middle school boys and girls, and loved it. So, and I know um, that keeps our theater <laughs> department going. I know the Ferdinands will be happy because they're actually exiting after this year. <laughs> after how many years in theater? 13, 13 years in theater. Your last boy's in there. I just know he's in Bye Bye Birdies. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to you soon, though. <laughs> okay. Sure. And finally, um, the high school. I'd like to invite Amanda Bobbish, please come up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amanda is accompanied by her parents and her grandfather. Uh, she's involved here at the high school uh, in, in multiple uh, groups. She's in the Drama Guild, a four-year letterman on the golf team, which makes her a senior, National Honor Society mm -hmm. member, part of TV, TV production, uh, part of student union, and she is here as the school board representative. Outside of school, she is affiliated with the Pittsburgh Penguins video department. Her current GPA is 3.9, and she plans to attend the University of Pittsburgh main campus after she graduates. Her major, film and media studies, her minor, American Sign Language, and her certification, certification in broadcast journalism. Her career aspirations are to be a technical director of live sports when she graduates. So I spoke with a few of her teachers and they said great things about her. I spoke with four of them. Uh, first, Mr. Vinton, which speaks very highly of her. She has been one of our star students at PTTV. She is truly exceptional and has been a natural leader for our program. Amanda takes on extra work consistently and truly does what's best for our newscast. Amanda directs our morning newscast and she consistently brings out the best in our team. She will be hard to replace and will be missed. Mr. Bujakowski, Amanda has a great attitude, humor, a work ethic in our real to real class. Her upbeat approach not only lightens the mood, but also makes learning more enjoyable for everyone involved. Amanda has a good sense for when to inject humor into discussions and to make every day, everyone's day better. She is very deserving of Student of the Month. Ms. Manupelli, when Amanda has an idea, she runs with it. When I catch her, for she is everywhere. She is a wise, wonderful thinker with an insight into human condition and drive. She accompl accomplishes everything with her heart. She listens to many and does it with care. Amanda embraces all of it with an overwhelming good heart. I am elated for her. And finally, Mr. Fox. 
Amanda Bobish exemplifies the qualities of an outstanding student and leader. As an educator, it has been a privilege to have her in my class for the past three years. Amanda's dedication to her studies is matched only by her talent and accomplishments as a vocalist and a musician. She consistently encouraged her younger peers, demonstrating a remarkable work ethic and a commitment to excellence. Congratulations to Amanda Bobish for being Penn Trafford High School Student of the Month. Take a minute to get a picture for the press. So the, the three students can come up. And during uh, September, we're also going to recognize you for the first football game that we do. The I'm um, student athlete. Except for Amanda, she's prefer to be off. Yeah, she might be able to come back from <laughs> Pitt. So, <laughs> so we are going to recognize you in the very first football game and invite you to the Warrior Center. But we're sending that out after the semester. We hope she comes back for the parade. Okay, we're looking for you. Come on over and get out of the way here. Those great qualities. Bring it back towards the back of the room.
Yeah, I just have a few things. I was told today by a student that there are 33 days left. <laughs> so, that's it, 33 days. If they're right, I think it is 33 days. So it's close, at least. It's coming to an end. A um, couple things. Uh, we're into the second week of Bye Bye Birdie, the musical, so that is this weekend. Is, uh, today, 12 FBLA students uh, were sent off to Hershey for states. Uh, on Saturday, the Concert Percussion and Indoor Pelly Guard performed the Three Rivers Winter Ensemble Association Championship at Kiski Area High School. The Indoor Color Guard earned a silver medal, and the Concert Percussion earned the gold medal with a w in the open classification with a score of 89.40. I'd like to thank uh, and congratulate the Mrs. Stefkovich's Business and Management class. They raised $8,000 this, this year for the, the Lamar Hamlin Foundation. Uh, this is for the business management and students learned how to run a small business. In the past 18 years, the class has raised $130,000 total to give out to the community. A couple other things, May 3rd is the prom, so that's right around the corner. And Keystone start next month, May 13th. Do you have any theme for the prom this year? You know, I don't know, Jim. That's a good question. Okay. The, the uh, tickets just went on sale. The sign just went up. I'm not sure what what the theme is. Maybe the student union. Oh, there's she'll a yeah. Maybe she will. Tell. And let's bring up the student union yes. round. That was Good nice. timing. Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes, I'm done. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, the, I don't know anything about prom. <laughs> 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 That's not Mr. Martini. It is the student union, so that's also not him again. Okay. Um, but I will find out. Uh, thank my you. My new mission. So, uh, um, we did. students from choir made it to all state um, so they used they got their chairs have to boil it up first chair and plate for um, the majority part um, which is something we have to do um, uh, that's pretty much everything we're looking at places on Oxford Hill here we have a few things but not this year this week um, so that's going to be fun um, kind of just looking through to the new year Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Can I ask about the cafeteria center? Sure. I mentioned something. I want to thank you. Uh, the assassin game. A lot of people might not know about it. How has that been impacted here at the high school? Mm -hmm. And as a result, I understand you're a good football player. You made a tackle. Yeah. Maybe so give it a, maybe give it a definition. Yeah. So, so in the past, we let the students know the ramification of bringing them into the school. Because bringing what into school? So people don't. They don't yeah. Know. Well, he's what, educators. What, what oh, educators. What is it? So the assassin game. Them. Students sign up. And they have to shoot each other with so water speak, pistols, with water pistols, and different types of <laughs> with different, uh, I'd say, types of guns. That they and once they get them, they go on to the next person. So it's ones like tag, you're up. So that's what they do. But they hide at people's houses in their bushes. They get them at the you know different places when they're coming out from the school in the morning. There's a couple rules. One, it cannot be done here at school at all. So this is like off, off limits. So we try to follow it through social media and try to get the person in charge of it and our SRO speaks with that individual about bringing it into the school. And it has not been an issue in the past. Great. You know, I don't know what the plot is up to now, but it, it gets very high because you have to pay to get into this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, my kids have all participated. Yeah. yeah. They'll hide in garbage cans. Yeah, I mean, they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll chase them anywhere. They showed up my daughter's soccer practice and yeah, they're, chased they're them all over the field. place. But it's kind of scary when you know you live in a developed and you run houses and you see yeah. these kids walking around in all yeah. black. Absolutely. And they're hiding in bushes. I can see that side. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, yeah. Well, we want to thank you from a security standpoint, what you were involved in. Can you want to share that? Well, there's just a little issue last mm -hmm. week that um, we, the, the, the police were involved and they need a little bit of help, so I kind of jumped in. So luckily the student was not hurt and, every, and it, 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 was, uh, it was over quickly. And 
Thank Penn you. Township, yeah, no problem. The Penn Township police were there at 49, and I stepped away, and they took care of it. Yeah. Were you hurt? Um, no, but they broke my glasses again. So oh. I'll get them back. <laughs> yeah, your contacts. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> that or take my glasses off next time I do that. So. Throw them to the side. Yeah, but I was fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Was fine. Next week, we're going to ask you under athletics and extracurricular to approve the choir Thanks, trip, and I know Amanda just talked about it. Under budget and finance, we're going to ask you to approve the contributions to the Recreation Committee, approve the WIU budget, approve audit of financial statements and single audit, approve expenditures, award the bid for diesel fuel, award the bid for paper. We won't have any items under buildings and grounds and safety or employee relations negotiations. Under food service, we're going to ask you to approve the food service agreements, the personnel and curriculum, approve the personnel agenda, approve the student assistance program, approve the foreign exchange student, authorize administration to request Act 80 days. Under policy, public relations, legislative title two, we're going to ask you to approve board policy, tentatively approve board policies and admin regulations. Under taxes, incentives, and insurance, we're going to ask you to approve the sale of property from the unsold property repository. Which brings us to the recognitions of visitors for back to you, Mr. Stover. Okay, uh, this is just the uh, procedure. You must state your name, address, and group affiliation, if any. Your statement will not will be limited to three minutes in duration. All statements shall be directed to the president, and no participant may address or question a board member individually. You may be uh, interrupted if your statement is too lengthy, personally direct, abusive, obscene, irrelevant. Uh, and the only person we have signed up is Thomas Foligno. And I'm sure you won't do any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> That's just boilerplate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so. Before I begin, uh, can I have that Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> You'll always be the youngest. <laughs> but hence he's an adult. <laughs> now Nick's not here, he's his second year of Duquesne? They have yeah. been, I have to tell you, this family has been avid PT supporters. And how many years, I know 13 years just in drama, but how many years total? time at PT and yeah. uh, I've been very blessed to have you and all your support. I know that you volunteer for almost everything mm -hmm. and it's always nice to see you at all the events, especially a lot of the musicals, a lot of the music department events, helping out, doing whatever it takes. So you were definitely remiss as a family and as a parent and as volunteers. So you still didn't name them by name. Yeah. <laughs> name <laughs> them by introduce them if you don't mind. Oh, okay. So okay. So these experiences are what spurred my senior project. I set out to find whether or not a majority of the student body of the high school was aware of epilepsy, and if not, what could be done to rectify this situation. In order to accomplish this, I conducted a statistical survey of 61 people that would help me come to a conclusion. In this, I tested students' comprehension of how an epileptic can be diagnosed, treated, and I tested their knowledge of misconceptions. Uh, a few of the questions that I asked were in the range of 1 to 20, how many classifications of seizures are there? Four people got this question correct, as there are two classifications, generalized and focal seizures. And then I asked, how long should an epileptic seizure be before it is required for someone to call 911? Seven people got this correct, and the correct answer is five minutes. If the seizure is five minutes or more, then it's necessary to call the emergency services. I then asked, other than muscular spasms, 
name a symptom of an epileptic seizure. 30 people got this correct, and they could have said anything from temporary confusion, a staring spell, stiff muscles, psychological symptoms such as fear, anxiety, or deja vu, breathing problems, loss of bowel or bladder control, falling suddenly for no reason, not responding to noise or words, appearing confused, nodding head rhythmically, and periods of rapid eye blinking. So after asking my nine questions, I tallied up the correct number of answers for each person and found that the average score was 1.89 correct answers out of nine. And this deviated normally by about 1.56. So at this time, I would like to direct your attention to the sheet labeled graph number one. Uh, for context, these different categories underneath each graph correspond to the number of correct answers. As you can see, completely unaware, that is if someone got zero to two questions correct. Unaware would be three to four. Limited awareness is five to six. Aware, aware is seven to eight. And completely aware is nine questions correct. As you can see in graph number one, the category of being completely unaware far outweighs all of the other categories with 35 people in this slot, 23 of which are underclassmen and eight are seniors. Then in the unaware slot, 21 people fall here with 17 underclassmen and four seniors. After this is limited awareness and that drops dramatically, five people, one underclassman, four seniors. And then finally we arrive Association of Western and Central, excuse me, Central Pennsylvania, who offers free seizure recognition and first aid training to all audiences. They even have a special program called Project School Alert, dedicated solely to teaching schools how to recognize and respond to seizures. I ask that we use this program, and every year on March 26th, National Epilepsy Awareness Day, a presentation uh, is held called The Truth About Epilepsy, a presentation they created directed solely at high school students. Now, while my focus has been about high school students, I also believe that it would be highly beneficial to utilize their other presentations, with one being directed to fourth through eighth graders, which is called One to 26, and another for those younger than that, called My Not-So-Secret Seizures. If you implement these changes, I feel that we as a school uh, and as a community will become a lot closer and uh, acknowledgeable of those around us. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, if you give me that paper so I can look up that information you said, I was starting to write it down and then I, I, got a quick you wrote it down? <laughs> okay, she, she was nice quicker than I was. Nice Thank presentation. You. I assume that the purple has significance. Yes. Um, Purple is the color of the oh. ribbon for epilepsy. And so um, I actually forgot to mention it. But on March 26, I would also like to ask that students be encouraged um, to wear purple to show their support. One other follow up question? Yeah. Uh, do you guys know the general percentage of the population that have, you know, have been uh, diagnosed with epilepsy? Last I checked, I believe it is around 1.2%. But it's a lot. Yes. Okay. It's the fourth most common neurological disorder. Okay. Thank you. In, in the training, how long is the training for the high school students? 45 minutes. So it's not that much better. So at 1.2 percent, I mean, we are talking that there are multiple kids at the high school with epilepsy, is what you're saying? Yes. That's correct. I mean, really 12, 15 kids or more. Yes, that is correct. Now, is this cut me off if anything starts crossing the HIPAA lines. So um, is this something you've had all your life? Uh, yes, I was born with epilepsy. Um, and so throughout my life, I've had to uh, teach people around me um, what to do in case I have a seizure. Because a lot of people jump to the conclusion that I have grand mal seizures, but I don't. I have something called fatigue mal, uh, also known as absence seizures. 
I just go unconscious for a little bit. Um, and so I needed to explain that to people because otherwise it would look like I, I was very rude and just staring at them blankly. My college roommate had exactly that same situation. So I'm familiar with that. Do you still go by terminology of petty mom and grandma? Uh, grandma is actually now known as a tonic clonic seizure, um, but petite mall, uh, as far as I'm aware, they still use that. Yes. And, and, and I, I had taught a couple of petty malls, and they're game free of point now. They're they're parents. They're oh yeah. They're, you know, the normal yeah, lifestyle. Yes. Um, if they team, if uh, at least speaking from my experience. Understanding how to treat it um, because there are multiple different ways you could take medication or uh, you could be on the keto diet. Uh, I know I've talked about that before, but I can't do that. I eat too much cereal for that. So. <laughs> um, but then there's other things too, like brain surgery um, to take care of it. So it's really all about um, making sure that you can have uh, as best a life as can we ask our, uh, how our nursing staff is here right now? Just give us sex here. Oh, I, I think the nursing staff is really awesome. Um, I remember, actually it was this year, um, I had accidentally taken a double dose of my medicine in the morning, and I went down to Nurse Pop um, because I was extremely tired. This young lady here is in charge of that, so let oh. uh, her respond. No, I, we were just talking about the training for staff. So our nurses are trained, and then as far as training other staff, I don't know if it, it's not a regular occurring t um, training we do, but the nurses do educate the staff on what they need to know during um, any student that has epilepsy. Well, if, um, if necessary, um, the Epilepsy Association of Western and Central PA, they also hold Thank you very Nicely much. Done. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. All right. And I'll turn that back to Mr. Stover. And uh, I just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need a motion for it. No, I don't. Just we're done. Yep, we're done. We're done. We're <laughs> done. Say good night. Say good night.